Hey everybody, you're watching GameSpot.com. I am Alexa Ray Korea, and I am here with Kevin Van Ord. Hi. And we're uh, here to talk about something very near and dear to Kevin's heart, and that is Assassin's Creed. As you all know, the new game is being revealed today in like five minutes. Uh, Kevin, I actually saw the game last week, so I know what's coming, but I want to ask you... I don't know shit. <laughs> for what? <laughs> you, <laughs> you've been so. with the series forever. You love it. You've got a tattoo. I do? I do. Show your tattoo. Oh. You got the sweet tattoo. Wait, wait, wait. Mm. There we go. There sweet we go. tattoo. Um, what elements of previous Assassin's Creeds, what things about the roots of the series do you really want to see come back? Like, what do you love about the series? Uh, well, I mean, the, the biggest thing I love is the free running, is the, is the, is the, uh, the feeling of soaring across the city without anything helping you soar. Like, the idea <laughs> that I'm parkouring and I'm, I'm almost kind of an acrobat and I don't need a parachute, I don't need any any kind of fancy machinery to get around. I can just run free wherever mm -hmm. I want to. Uh, my favorite part of the series. I mean, I still think that Assassin's Creed 2 is the pinnacle of the series. And, and I think that uh, one thing that I would like to see, I guess, from, from Assassin's Creed going forward, well, a couple things, actually. One is I'd sort of like, to, I'd sort of like the uh, KISS uh, design philosophy, which is keep it simple, stupid. Um, I've never I, heard that before. I think I think that Assass the, the original Assassin's Creed was was you know criticized for not having enough to mm -hmm. it. So it's, I feel like Assassin's Creed Two hit that exact perfect ratio of having stuff to do without making it feel like it was just overloaded with stuff for the sake of stuff. And I feel like Assassin's Creeds have become, frankly, overloaded with stuff for the sake of stuff. And uh, what I'd really like to see is is a sort of a a return to, you know, every mechanic having a meaning, mm. um, and th that's yeah. that's probably what what I would want. And, and of course, a, a lead character that can carry not just one game but multiple games after. Which Ezio still the best leading man in Assassin's Creed. What? Maybe a leading woman would be nice. A leading woman would be nice. I mean, we've had leading women, <laughs> um, but they leading. they've been sort of relegated to the sidelines. We've we've had. Uh, you know, Assassin's Creed, Liberty. Was Liberation. It? Liberation, thank you. I mean, I, I, I believe you was cool. You guys know. <laughs> she um, was cool. And then, of course, the, the most recent Assassin's Creed Chronicles China mm -hmm. um, had Xiao Jun. And, and, uh, but, they, but, you know, it would be nice to see a, a leading lady. Um, it but, would be. Uh, yeah. Um, but, but really, you know, for me, it comes down to that. Like, let's, let's strip away all the excess. Stop putting stuff in for the sake of stuff. Mm. Make, it, make, make it meaningful. Yeah. So we've actually, uh, we have, they've already announced, or we've seen leaks that it looks like it's going to be set in Victorian London. What yep. do you think about, what do you think about bringing Assassin's Creed modern? How do you feel about sort of a modern era Assassin's it's Creed? It's been leaning to that, right? Yeah. I mean, we've, we've been slowly working our way up in the main stories. And, and, okay, so look, I'll be honest, like, I'm one of the people that actually kind of liked the Desmond thing. I know that makes me a weird freak. It wasn't bad. Uh, it was. It had its. I think his story was stronger in the beginning. I think right. it sort of towards the end did a little. I. I but I, I. sort of feel like I. What I really wish was happening now is, and I, I don't really care about the Abstergo stuff with with four and 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 the going on. Stuff. Like yeah, I don't. I don't really care about like uh, that kind of stuff. Like the the way they handled That's it after that. Oh, so, oh, oh, we're going. Here we go. Oh, so here we go. For, forget me. All Whatever. right. So. My name is uh, François Pellin. I'm executive director for the studio and senior producer on the new project. I was one of the first ones to start in Ubisoft Montreal. I'm, I believe that I was number 56. Since 97 to now, uh, the company changed. We all matured. We all made a lot of mistakes, uh, tried different things, had a lot of success on stuff, less on others, but we've all learned. 
that's been the beauty of Ubisoft in Quebec, in Montreal, is that company that gives you the chance to try stuff and to create. Because when you do something for the first time, we innovate. So these are actually uh, quite old memories, you know. Uh, it's few uh, pages, you know, of uh, design research I've uh, saved. I remember the first time seeing AC1, uh, it was mind-blowing. It was, I've never seen, you know, a character touching the world in such a unique way. I've never seen a world that was so detailed and so rich. We had no engine, uh, so we built our own engine from scratch. Um, and all we had to go on was our taste. As you can imagine, when you don't have any specs, you're basically given a blank check. You can invent the world if you want. And we completely did invent the world. Like the amount of features that we had, the final game had nine missions. The original game that we designed had 72. Assassin's Creed is about transporting people to a time that they can never really truly visit. The games have always had this really great sense of freedom, of exploring somewhere, of going to a historical context in these amazing looking worlds. I don't want the player just to focus, focus on fights and action and look at the ground, you know. I want people to look up. It's an open world, so I want the people to wait for the, for the sunrise. We saw this little prototype of naval combat that they were doing for AC3. We got super excited because it was beautiful, it looked fun, and, and I think this was the thing that kind of kicked off the idea that what if Assassin's Creed went into the golden age of piracy. For every game we try to, to bring new colors, new vibrant flavors. Brotherhood was really the sequel of Ezio. I mean, people love so much Ezio in AC2 that it was uh, really good to see him again and to see how grown he was. He was a leader now, not this young man anymore. We wanted to be able to climb everywhere, to discover every place, but have like no limitation on the exploration. Being able to just do cool things with parkour. Me? I can't do that. I can't climb buildings and jump over rooftops. With AC3, we really showcased that the franchise can go anywhere. With the frontier, the snow, there's actually a full seasonal weather system. So you have uh, summer, fall, winter, and spring. We dreamed big and just tried stuff. And then at some point it was working and it was magical. I was a kid not very happy at school. I was always drawing, always dreaming, drawing like uh, castles, places. I'm still doing the same thing, you know, now. It's, it's like creating universe, creating worlds, and this is what I love to do. I sat at home playing AC2 in my living room and said out loud to my husband, oh my God, this game, I just love this game so much. I'd love to work on this, this is so cool. Then when you get the opportunity to work on that game, you feel very connected to it. You feel protective of it. It's like a child. You want it to do really well. Innovating in AC is always both exciting, you know, and tricky. Innovation isn't necessarily like going crazy, it's about like finding the difference that matters and also keeping the soul of the brand alive. I always say it's really hard to just say, okay, let's innovate, let's start innovating. There's no such thing. Uh, instead, you know, I can say that raising as many lightning rods as possible, hopefully lightning will strike. Every year we take risks. This one we may have taken too many, too many risks. Um, there were a lot of ambitious elements. It was the biggest city we'd ever built. It was a really complex city, and if you look at it, it looks beautiful. Everything was fresh, everything was new. It was this huge ambition, which was, which was amazing. ACU was the first one in the AC brand where we saw that it was a much lower Metacritic. For people to work so hard on something for four years and then to have the reception that it had, you're leaving a piece of yourself in that thing. It's like you're, you're a kid being told you're ugly and you're fat. And that, it hurts. Your little heart breaks a little bit. The worst thing that can happen actually uh, when you release a game is to have one of your bugs uh, becoming the front cover of uh, the entire internet. Nobody's happy when four uh, years of hard work 
are just an image, you know, with the bug. Some people took it personally, some people took it upon themselves that, you know, they, they, they made mistakes. At the same time, I do feel for the fans who felt uh, somehow that it didn't meet their expectations. Uh, that's disappointing as well. And uh, that's uh, something we can never uh, uh, take for granted as a developer. But the main thing for me is you look at that critically. You do post-mortems and you say, what can we improve? Ubisoft is, is very aware that as we push the games out, we constantly need to innovate and bring something new. And I've got this great core of technology that's there, um, but how can we do even more with it? By listening to the comments, reading the forums, reading the, the reviews, we always base our next steps on that. So we really took a step back. We had to admit, you know, the, the, the flaws. For sure, there's always challenges. Um, but to me, when you have a challenge, you, you face it and you move forward. And then you pick yourself up <laughs> and you move on to the next challenge that you have and you build on the things you did well and the things that people enjoyed and that they wanted more of. In the end, what is uh, at the core of our work is really to think about the player. So this is these people we should never, ever forget. The players are our audience, but we are also players. We want the game to be the best possible player experience because we all play our games. Right here, right now, we're in the middle of production of a new Assassin's Creed game. Um, there's hundreds of people working on the project and we're working on making sure that we do an amazing game. We want to do something that doesn't exist. We don't know how we will make it. We worked hard, we failed, we retry, we test, etc. And in the end, we do something that we hope people will like. We're putting a lot of new features, new things that the player hasn't been able to do before in the game. I really like to have people to think in a few years' time, five years, six years, is it? Do you remember that game that we did in 2015? It was great. From missions to features to cinematic to story, every second of this experience is going to be amazing. London, 1868, the center of the industrialized world. Profits see progress while workers never sleep. Slavery not only comes through irons and chains, but through our very struggle to survive. Time for a change. Enough of those who seek only their own gain. We're amidst an industrial revolution. The telegraph, electricity, are changing the way that we live, shaping our future. But it must be a future for everyone. A different revolution is rising, more subtle. A blaze from the ashes of an old brotherhood. We shall rise. Street gangs will be our armies. The slums our fortress. They say this is the modern era. I say it's time for a rebirth. And we shall lead the way. My name is Marc-Alex Sicoté, and I'm a creative director at Ubisoft Quebec City. Assassin's Creed Syndicate takes place in London in 1868. The Industrial Revolution, in essence, is society going from almost a medieval society to the modern society in which we live in today. It's an increase in productivity that's never been seen before in the history of mankind. You see transportation breaking through. In the span of a few years, enough railroads were constructed to go around the circumference of the Earth. It's a world that's ruled by science. We'll see tons of progress in medicine that prolongs the lifetime of people from about 20 years old to 50 years old. It's a world that's no longer ruled by kings or by religion. It's a world that's ruled by money. 
And this is something that completely changes society. You have the upper classes, which still rule the city because they are the ones who have the right to vote. So the fate of the lower classes was pretty much to either work hard and to die young, or to resort to something new. But the industrial era sees the birth of organized crime, a bit as we know it today. It's really a concept that takes root in the Victorian era. People would bend together to try to defend their common interests in what we could call syndicates. So the new assassin of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, his name is Jacob Fry. Jacob is a born and raised assassin. He's going to have allies that are the street gangs of London. Evie is twin sister of Jacob. She's the more calculated, the more rational uh, personality. She's the one that's going to guide uh, Jacob through his quest to free up London. Jacob will always approach the situation with a really hands-on and head-on approach. So he will be more brash, more brutal, more uh, confrontational. He's all about the trill. He's all about the chase. Assassin's Creed Syndicate will be the fastest paced Assassin's Creed that we've ever built. The speed of combat in Assassin's Creed Syndicate has changed from the past. We are making combat much more closer range than ever in the past. The reason we're doing this is that the Victorian era has changed the way we think about weapons. You can no longer walk down the streets with a, a sword at your hip, you would be arrested. People fought with hidden knives, hidden blades, uh, with brass knuckles. So there's a lot of freedom for the player to create chaos. We are making combat much more like a brawl in which you have to control uh, the crowd and jump from one enemy to another enemy. One of the key innovations of Assassin's Creed Syndicate is its traffic system, and it's going to open up so many more gameplay possibilities. Players can jump on top of vehicles, they can drive them, they can integrate them to parkour. They can kill and assassinate people from vehicles. It makes the combat much more faster paced, but also more brutal and more lethal than ever before. Let me show you what I mean in this first gameplay walkthrough of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. It's reckless. It's clever. The blighters control every criminal enterprise in the city. If they work for us... Yes, but they work for the Templars. No, they're paid off by the Templars. Slight difference. If we take control of the gangs, we take control of London from the bottom up. You are talking about building yourself an army. Miss Fry, tell him this is complete madness. You'd need to consolidate your control. I can keep the rival gangs and the police from sweeping in and seizing the territory. You can't very well send Bloody Nora an engraved invitation. We have no idea where they hold up. Yeah, we do. You found them? The Blighties are operating out of the rookery. Bloody Nora will be there. Good work, Clara. Tremendous work. Jacob, can't talk now, Henry. Duty calls. To your health. Apologies, Mr. Green. We are now in the city of London, one of the seven boroughs that you'll experience in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. The city of London was the economic and financial heart of London in the 19th century. The borough fully embodies the hustle and bustle spirit associated with Victorian London. Booming businesses, busy sidewalks, and even busier streets. New to our game are iconic modes of transportation, including trains and carriages. Omnipresent in Victorian London, carriages will change how you play Assassin's Creed. 
You can take the reins and traverse the city faster than ever before. You can also hide in them, adding another tool to your stealth game or run over targets and enemies. The possibilities are endless. In this mission, Jacob wants to take over one of the Templars' control gangs in order to build an army against the Templars that run the city. To do so, he will need to conquer the borough by dislodging the enemy gang from their stronghold. Not unlike big cities today, rich and poor share the same environment. Even the richest neighborhood, like Westminster, had areas where the police would not dare set foot. These slums were where street gangs ruled. With the simple push of a button, we'll activate stealth mode as we are entering enemy-controlled territory. Also new to our game, the rope launcher will change the way you navigate throughout the city. With this new tool, you can climb the IS building in seconds or a zip line from rooftop to rooftop. Let's trigger Eagle Vision to study our surroundings. We can see that one of our allies is in trouble. Let's give him a hand. We first need to eliminate the lookout to make sure he doesn't call reinforcements. The throwing knives will take him out silently. We are facing a lot of enemies, so the head first approach is probably not a good idea. Also new to our game is the ability to use the environment to take out your enemies. Another one of our allies is in trouble. Let's take care of this before it's too late for him. Are you in danger, no, citizen? You don't look the slightest bit disreputable. Please don't start any trouble. Here now. <laughs> Now that our ally is free, for the help, we'll ask him to assist us in our fight for this slum. Here is the stronghold leader, highlighted in yellow. Let's try to take him out with stealth, as he is more dangerous than common tugs. We'll use the hallucinogenic darts to turn our enemies against one another. This slum is now one, and your gang occupies the territory. Huh. Well, well. 
The assassins have come crawling out of their holes, have they? Damn it, boys! Deal with this! We were caught in a trap orchestrated by Bloody Nora, one of the seven Templar gang leaders. Her rule of the borough has been one of cruelty and suffering. We need to take her out once and for all. Let's go. Come on. Bloody Norse thugs are trying to make sure you don't get them, ramming our carriage to kill them. Our carriage has taken some damage but seems to be holding up. out confrontation between your gang and your rival for the ultimate control of the borough. Jacob feels right at home in these fights, thanks to our new fighting system, as it is faster and more responsive than ever before. is really focused and working really hard for the last two years in making sure that we have an amazing and polished single player experience. All the people I encounter on the teams, I keep asking to take good care in like the little street corner that they are working on to try to tell a story with all the tools that they have, with the crowd that they are placing so that the, the game has a story to tell everywhere the player turns a stone. It's an intimate relationship between the player and the protagonist as he relives his life in a pivotal moment in history. It's a completely new kind of Assassin's Creed that is respectful of the franchise, but it transforms its gameplay in a way that makes it more fun than ever. I want them to feel like it's the best Assassin's Creed that's ever been made. It's a bloody marvelous time to be alive. An age of invention. So many clever blokes dreaming up impossible machines. Sorting away more gold than Queen Victoria herself. But none of those shillings ever makes it into the pockets of the poor devils whose blood is spilled building this glorious empire. The working class sneak walks through life unaware of the machine that drives them. Let's wake them up then, shall we? Holy shit! Okay, that looked awesome. What do yeah, you think, Kevin? Looks, looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, can I say I'm going to start because because okay. it's me. <laughs> I'm going to say something negative to start, and then I, and then and then, and then I want you to talk. Yeah. <laughs> can I just say, 
for the next for the next thing that you show Ubisoft, do, turn down the damn bloom <laughs> on the thing because geez, the, all I saw it's in the game bright. was half of everything just looked completely washed out from from whiteness. So okay, so come lighting. on, get a grip. Otherwise, lighting. Now 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 moving to the positive elements. Moving on is Alexa um, Correa. Yes, so I actually I saw Syndicate last week. I went to Quebec City and got a chance to see it in the studio and meet the people making it and. Um, I'm I'm really optimistic. I really like what I saw. Yeah. I'm a, one of the big things that I really like, and I think people will really like, and they showed it in the gameplay demo. Is those vehicles? You can hijack vehicles like GTA style, punch people out, take their horse and carriage, and like run over people in the streets. I really like it. And if you notice, the people on the sidewalks will react. Right. Like if you run them over, they'll fall down and people will be like, oh shit, and they'll like move away. I was suddenly watching this thinking, oh, it's GTA Assassin's Creed. It looks really good. I I think this is gonna be I can't wait for like the YouTube Let's Play videos of people like flipping carriages and crashing them. You can crash carriages to cause diversions. Um, the developers also told me there will be trains and Boats, in some capacity, you actually see concept art in their developer diary of uh, Jacob fighting on a train, which is a moving train, which is super cool. Um, I saw the I saw Jacob uh, fighting on top of these carriages. I saw him jumping. Uh, at one point, I jumped on top of or the, the demo I was watching in Quebec. The guy jumped on the back of a carriage, and a police officer jumped up after me and like threw me off. It was or me, I me, I wasn't playing threw the driver off. It was super right. cool. I'm really excited. Can you tell? I'm like a little... You're very Whoa! excited. Whoa! I'm a little hey, like shaking. Watching that, it makes it makes the, the carriage uh, chase actually look pretty mm -hmm. interesting. It wouldn't be the first carriage chase in Assassin's Creed. This has appeared before and oh, actually yeah. um, previous carriage chases haven't been the strongest suit of other <laughs> Assassin's Creed games. But what no. I liked about that is it looked... It looked like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's supposed to be a little bit clumsy, right? It's, it's this big thing with like a you know the wagon in the back tipping and mm -hmm. you know it's courses and stuff so you can't expect it to be perfectly right. like you know tweaky or whatever i'm making up words now that's a new word tweaky. i made up yeah. tweaky uh, um, but, no, but that uh, looks great. It, it looked really fun um i'm more interested like the combat too i'm kind of curious like you saw the com i, I saw the combat there it looked really fast paced um, one thing that it, that I saw, and I don't know how this how representative this is of the whole, but in the in the in the gang fight we saw, gang like one fight. gang Ga fight, gang, gang fight, fight, yes. <laughs> um, but in that in that uh, in the bit that we saw, one thing that really intrigued me was uh, the fact that you didn't see like a horde of dudes surrounding him, right? And then it becomes like a an ultra choreographed um, thing where everybody's all waiting around to attack until right. the, until the moment. Um, now, I don't Look, know if that's see? partially because of the way it's set up. He's only taking on one attacker at a time because everybody else is busy. So, the but. thing the thing about the gang fights, I did I saw the, the gang fights in, like this, uh, when I went and saw the game. And it, uh, you run in with your dudes, you run into the gang fight, and not all of them go after you. Like, the opposing AI, the, the people on the opposing gang, will go after other people in your gang. Like, everyone is not focused on you. So it feels like a gang fight, and as Jacob or whoever you're playing as, you can go around and say, "All right, I'm going to take out this guy. I'm going to stab this one. I'm going to stun this person." Like you are part of a group fight. It's not a group of people and you, and the group of people are focused on you while everyone else tries to fend them off. Like it's a true gang fight, and I love the gang fights. Like that looks really cool. They block off the city streets. You see people cheering on the sides. Like it's really cool. When you saw it, I mean, did, when you talked to them, did they mention that that was like a pretty typical scenario in the game? Like, is that yeah, how a so, lot of the combat's going to play out so that it's not like a bunch of dudes and then everything just, everybody happening to wait until, you know, you're, you're in a position to actually, you know, they, counter. They talked about retooling the AI to be more responsive. Um, Re-gang fights, um, gang fights will be like that. And, and there's a gang fight. You ha a gang fight is how you get control of a borough. Like you were in a gang fight because you had to take out Bloody Nora and take out her game, so her gang. So that will be something that you're doing a lot of. The gang fights will be a lot right. of them. Um, as far as combat goes, yes. And what I saw, what I saw, um, while we were sort of sneaking around and taking people out in alleys and whatnot, um, people won't won't wait around for you. Like the AI doesn't wait around for you. They'll pull out their gun. They'll run after you. I didn't see any any AI that I was in combat with standing still. Um, another thing about the combat is it's all close quarters. So it's right. all brawling. Like you're in 1868 London, you're well, in the criminal underground, like unless you're doing something like that <laughs> where, you're, where you're sneaking around. 
But um, let's, let's actually talk about this for a second. They changed the stealth. Um, it's no longer cover-based. Like, you, you're not, you're not uh, going to be focusing on blending in with crowds or hiding out in bushes or sneaking uh, or just hiding. It's not hiding-based. So it's basically just a stealth Yes, button? it's yeah, it's stealth. It's, it's a more modern stealth. Like you'll be crouching. You hit a button to crouch and you sneak and around. And then you just sort of yeah. sort of soft snap into the cover when you when yes. you get close to it. And you can when use you're crouching. Yeah, and you can use um, like the the throwing knives work differently now. You have hallucinogenic darts, so you can actually throw them into fire sources and it'll puff out and it'll make the enemies around that fire source um, kill each other. And as we saw just here, you can use the throwing knives to knock things down that are hanging in the sky. Like they're not just for killing anymore, which is really cool. Also the whistles back. You can crouch around a corner and whistle and someone will come toward you and you can just pull them into cover and pull them behind whatever you wherever you are and just stab them. And what would Assassin's Creed be without a bale of hay? Right? Look at these the kids. Alley. These kids are like, uh look see look everyone is reacting to you. Do you notice this? Yeah. All those people, they're like, oh, there's, I like that. she that backed up. That woman's like, oh. Um, She's like, no. <laughs> and the guy's coming around, nope, it's like, nope. oh, nope. Not going over there. See, this guy here is you. That dude's a little. He's screwed. Look at these mustaches. A plus on the mustaches and the facial hair in Syndicate. Yeah, um, lots, lots of good facial hair. I was oh, actually, yeah. like, I'm kind of glad. I was going to shave this morning and just trim up my beard, and I'm like, I'm, I'm glad, glad you I kept didn't it. Because now, now, I'm, now I'm kind of bushy Look and at keeping this. with the game. This woman didn't stand a chance. Look at her. Bye. And she's and, our ally. Hooray! She's she get a nice tip of the hat. Top of the morning, Top governor. Top of the morning, governor. So, uh, <laughs> speaking <laughs> speaking of which, you know, I, I think I, I'd love to see about more of the. I mean, we don't really know a whole lot. We know about the you know the characters now, and of course, mm -hmm. I know you want to talk about Evie some. When Ooh, we, when we I get do want to talk about Evie. Um, but I, I one thing I'm curious about is like how, where the story is going to go and things like that. I mean, I think that you you have a preview going up. I do. Um, uh, 9.30 should be up now, actually. Um, we saw, we were told uh, that the story for Assassin's Creed Syndicate, you have uh, Evie and Jacob, and Evie and Jacob have been bored, born outside of London, and you will be experiencing London for the first time along with the twins. They're twins. Um, I really like the dynamic here. He, she's sitting up, he's hunched over. I like their banter. You actually, there will be story missions where you can actually pick who you play as, but both of them will also have story missions specific to them. Now, Evie, we're told we're going to get more information on her a little later this summer. She's going to get her own time to shine in the media spotlight, um, I suppose. But right now they are showing off Jacob. So we will yeah. definitely be getting more from her. But I really like her. I like the little freckles on her face. I like that they're a brother and sister. Something that I something that I didn't like about Unity is I think the romance between like the adopted siblings was I don't know, it took away from the story for me. I know it was sort of the romance was the thing, but I'm kind of tired of romances. I really like the dynamic that you see between siblings and I'm just so excited that we're getting a brother and a sister that's not, oh, I'm the older sister and I'm doing whatever or I'm the older brother and I'm guarding my little sister. They're twins, they're the same age. Um, and I really like the idea of sort of the idea of sibling rivalry, but also, but also working together. Like I right. have two brothers, and I love the idea of like sibling stuff. So now I'm excited about this. Let's point out that the clip that you just saw was was not was, them. I'm so was sorry. Not them. Oh god. I want to point out that we that we didn't just see a hot <laughs> no. brother and sister kiss. No, although, they're adopted. Although a brother and sister kiss would also not be new to Assassin's Creed if we saw it there. Of course that was, not. That we that we, was we've seen a little. Yeah. We've seen a little incest before on this series. That was so Arno and Elise creepy. from Unity yeah. with the smoochy smoochy. No, yeah. but yeah, no, I'm really excited uh, to finally have a leading female assassin. I think that's hurrah, hurrah! Like that's so I got at least awesome. One of, my, one of my hopes came true. You got it. One of your hopes. Yeah. Your fondest wish. Uh, and and I know. Oh, by the way, we, you should tune in at two o'clock, um, two yes. p.m. Pacific time because we have an episode of the lobby. Mm -hmm. um, You'll talk a lot more about sort of what you saw yep. of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Mm -hmm. um, you'll be getting, I'm sure you'll be getting more into, uh, I almost said Elise, which would have been really no. bad. No. <laughs> Evie, Wrong another one. E name. It's Evie. another E name. Yay. I like that name, Evie. Um, and, uh, of course, I'll pit myself for just half a second because I'll also be answering yes. a bunch of questions about The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Yeah. So tune in for that. But uh, yep. also, we saw the, you know, there was, there was one spot where, where she kind of saved Jacob. Is this his name? Jacob, right? Jacob. I okay, okay. I don't know why I'm, I'm still Jacob a tired. Jacob and Evie Fry. Um, but uh, you saw she her like him. use the, the, 
the rope, the rope, the rope launcher, or whatever, to like actually the rope launcher get the get the revolver out of yep. uh, the, her the bloody Nora. B bloody Nora. I almost said bloody Baron because I've still got Witcher three in my head. You're so funny. Um, I love you. But uh, yeah, totally, this right like, here. What what the what's up with the uh, the rope with launcher? This thing? So the rope launcher is the new weapon. Um, Ubisoft seemed, the developers seemed really excited about it. And I was like, okay, is it like a, a, a thing? It sort of functions like Batman's grappling hook in the Arkham games. You can use it to surmount buildings, which we saw. He, uh, Jacob shot it upwards and he scaled the building much, much quicker. You can, in your assassin gauntlet, you can shoot the hallucinogenic darts from it. Um, the interesting thing about the rope launcher that I saw, when if you are standing on a roof or anywhere, you can shoot it to another rooftop and you can zip line. If it's lower, you can zip line down. If it's higher, you can actually climb it across. And that turns, you can attach it anywhere. And that rope launcher makes all of the airspace in Victorian London available for aerial assassinations. So you could, in theory, do this, stop halfway through, look down and assassinate the person below you, turn, shoot the rope launcher back up, and just rope launcher right out of there. Like, it looks super cool. Rope launcher rope right Rope launcher on right out on there. out of there. Yeah. <laughs> no, super, it looks super cool, and I like that it gives you more, more attack options. I love Assassin's Creed games, and I love action-adventure games with stealth in it that have the stealth option, but I am, like, I am a stealth player. I tried to stealth, only stealth, through The Last of Us and just failed miserably, but I prefer... I don't think you can... I you mean, can't. You can't. Assassin's Creed has never really been... Been just stealth. A stealth, stealth but, game. But I like that this is sort of bringing it into a more modern stealth approach than using stealth the way a lot of, a lot of recent games use it. And I like that I have, I have that option, that I can just sneak around and I have a lot more options to do sneaky kills. Right. I'm, I'm curious. It looks great. So I got a, one more question for mm -hmm. you that I have. If if you know the answer, which is about this territory control thing. Yes. Um, I'm kind of curious about that because like it brings to mind something like okay, so Assassin's Creed Revelation had the whole thing where um, I mean, not only did you capture capture places, but then like you tower had to defend. Yeah, but then you had to defend them, and then it had that stupid tower defense. Uh, Mini game mm -hmm. built in there, so we'll forget about the tower defense mini game for a minute. Um, but uh, I'm I'm kind of curious. Are you going to have to then defend that? Are they are you know? Do you know if they're if uh, the gangs are going to try to come in and you know take control of uh, the the regions that you've already taken for your own? Is there a, like a tug of war? So I know play? that like your goal as Jacob and Evie is to te the Templars control the underbelly of London as well as the not underbelly of London, but each borough will have a gang leader that you have to overthrow and you have to capture their strongholds and like get their men and bring them to you like we saw in the demo. We are Jacob and Evie Fry, you work for us now, da da Like, okay, like this is them burning the banner. And they're the all banner. just like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, and they're like, of course, the sure. name of their group, by the way, is The Rooks. <laughs> That's the name of, of their gang. Of course it is, the of Rooks. course it is. They're The Rooks. Um, and you kidnap these boroughs and they're yours. There are seven boroughs in London and you have to get all of the strongholds. I don't actually know if you, if you then have to defend them. I'd like to know. It would be something interesting to know for certain. Be a lot, I also be like a lot of work. the fact that it's the Rooks. So the Rooks. For, for people that don't know, they're in, in Far Cry 3, there's actually an island called Rook Island. And mm -hmm. If you go to Rook Island in Far Cry 3, there's Assassin's Creed Easter eggs on that island. So Ooh. it's not actual Easter eggs. It's not like, you know. Right. It's but not it's... like you're going and hunting you know, for actual For eggs, actual, actual. <laughs> I can't believe I'm, I, so I can't funny. believe I'm explaining myself. I'm still tired. Is it, I have a little anyway, bit more of my sip of stuff here. So, yeah, that was uh, <laughs> Assassin's Creed Syndicate, uh, former codenamed Victory. Uh, you can look at my previews. They're all up on GameSpot.com right now. I'll be talking more about it on the lobby. And thank you for watching. Thank Hooray. you, Kevin. My pleasure.